hello. Well, before we go into the, what this thing is about, bass plugin, bass amp plugin, I would like to show you this thing in two different tracks. And it's me, so my videos are long. So I put the full songs here because it's about songs. You can skip them. You can not listen to them at all. You can do whatever the fuck you want. But here are two full songs, very different styles, using the Gorilla Bass plugin.
Well, thanks for listening. Different songs, different sounds. This is a very, very flexible tool. So here we are. This is the Gorilla uh, bass plugin from Aurora DSP, who made the brilliant Mr. Hector amp. Now, this doesn't look like an amp, and it doesn't have to because it is a plugin. We are living in 2022, so you can make things look not like an amp. And be careful when you open this up, you first will not really understand what's going on. I, I looked at it and at some point I was like, ah, I get it. Um, but then I didn't. And looking at the manual for a bit is a good idea. Let's go into this. Input makes total sense, right? I'm going into my Apollo on the high Z input with this amazing Valiant bass. I went with a five spring because why not? And then you've got mid treble, bass mid. Is this an EQ? But then you got treble over here. Look, look over, over there, over, over here. You got treble, middle, and bass. But then you've got low, low, mid, high, mid, high. So where's your EQ and what is all this stuff? Well, when you're starting to see this section and this section and then the lower section being separated from each other, you're starting to understand that this is a Multiband, multiband, Lilo Dallas multiband. It's a joke. Uh, it's a multiband bass plugin. So what's happening here is first it is going through the preamp. So it is not the the signal chain isn't clear. So there are uh, there are actually two different signal chains, and you can change them by using this bypass preamp thing down here. But <clears throat> let's not go there. You can do that on your own. I'll show you how it signal chains. It's going through the preamp. Three different kind of preamps. Some kind of basement thing, some kind of something else, and then some kind of something else. Read it in the manual. I don't want to name brands that this is based on. Three different classic preamps. Ampeg, I think Aguila or something, whatever. Preamp gain right here. And very nice um, <clears throat> animation of the knob. Knob gets bigger, does riffly things there. And you can mix in how much that preamp is affecting your bass tone, which is great because when you're driving, you can actually do parallel distortion. You pick the preamp, you pick the gain, you can switch it to drive, and you can switch it to a lot more drive with the hot knob. So that then goes into a frequency splitter. It first goes into the mid treble, and let's say we go to 1K, and right now we're splitting everything above 1K and everything below 1K, okay? <clears throat> Wait, does it go through the tone stack first? Yes, it does. So it's going through the preamp, then through the tone stack, so you can determine your low, low, mid, high, mid, high. Uh, you can also turn on bright, or if you want it uh, rolled off in the top end, you can actually select gentle, which is very nice if you want those nice precision kind of sounds or uh, fretlessly kind of stuff without lots of trebly stuff. Um, and then it is going into the split. And right now I'm splitting it between uh, everything above 1.1K, no, well, yeah, about 1.1K and everything below. And then you can say everything above as it was affected by the preamp and the tone stack, how much of that do I want in there with this big ass treble volume knob? Then the rest, everything below 1.1K is going into this middle section. Why is there the MIDI learn? Cancel, thank you. Um, it's Everything, by the way, can be controlled with MIDI, every single thing. And if you're in a, an, in, in, in a DAW, that could be interesting. I, I wouldn't, but you could. So then it's going into this uh, middle section, I think that's how it works, gets affected, and then it's going into the base mid split, and again, I'm splitting everything under, let's say, 250 here, and then that is going, yet again, into the base section. So in the middle section, you have a grunt, which adds overtones, it's not really drive, it just adds some overtones. 
and a maximizer. So you can compress the mix differently from the rest. And the, the same thing for the bass frequencies. You can compress and fatten them up, maximize them differently, and add growl, which is prob probably the same thing as grunt. It adds overtones and just richness. And then you can determine how much you want of that frequency. So these are the three main levels for your frequencies, okay? Also, in uh, before the preamp, you can actually dial in a low octave, it's got an octave in it, and a high octave. Not super thrilled by these, but we'll check them out. Then you have four IRs. You can, of course, hit plus and load your own. I don't have any base cap IRs and I wouldn't care because it comes with four and that's fine. And then with this matrix <clears throat> up in the top right, you can actually pick which one you want or all four or between three and four, a little bit more four. You know, you can find the right balance. Then there's a master limiter right here and a master output. So once you understand, again, it's going into the input preamp tone stack, like a, an app. Then we're splitting it between mid and treble, affecting that, and then splitting that between bass and mid. And then you can compress and fatten up and harmonize or put harm, uh, uh, more harmonics in it, not harmonize, harmonicanize. And uh, uh, then you pick your levels. So it's definitely more complex than a bass amp would be. But holy crap. So I made a couple of presets up here. There are, let's look at the presets from them. Some of them might be dangerous, like the Bright Slapper. So let's start with the ch uh, Child of Corn. Um, I'm going, as I said, into the Apollo. It is then going on the input of Cubase through the uh, Gorilla, and then actually going onto a track, which is in monitor mode, but that, go that is going uh, directly out of a virtual uh, output back into the Apollo so that it have the most uh, reduced latency possible. So it's not going through my, my master section or anything. I'm literally just going in and out. There's the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest bit of um, perceived latency, but that is pretty much normal with any plugin. It depends on how you have your uh, recording setup set up in terms of, you know, buffering and that stuff. So you can also bypass sections. But let's see what our dry signal sounds like. That would be this. Not bad, but I would definitely do stuff to that um, in a mix. And I might, well, might as well do that with the Gorilla. By the way, the Gorilla itself is also a knob that does mystical things. Don't quite know exactly what it does, but you twist it and see what happens. A bit hot in the input there. No, not really. Okay, we're good there. A little bit empty in the midst. I don't know how much that would actually come through because I mean, just the low end is, you know, if you have the guitars fitting that, yeah. You know, I've got a pick for the people that want to pick. So if, we, if I go to this preset with the Bright Slapper, it is very. And it's also driving a bit. I don't know how to slap. A little bit too driving for me. Um, what else do we have? Uh, chill bro. Mm -hmm. 
not a lot of mids in there. Now they're going aggressive. But you can see octaves, both of them fully dialed in. And if they aren't absolutely perfect, then the distortion will actually add harmonics that are maybe, you know, not right there. Sounds a little bit out of tune there. I think that would just create mud. Now it's actually a good preset. wanted to play bass like that, which you shouldn't. <clears throat> What's the heavy monkey? It's also a tuner, which I've never tried. And it works. <clears throat> So let's look at my presets. Our last page is one of the songs that you heard, which is actually played with a pig. See, so a very, very, very different sound than what they're dialing in. I've got quite a bit of mids here, and actually I feel like the more mids you dial in, the more the bass goes down. It's, it's occupying that space. I like it. It's easy to dial in exactly what I need. Then we had Surrender, which is more of a pop thing. So going with this preamp, not lots of drive, but fully in. A very narrow band between 200 and 800 in the midsection. So I think Surrender is like... Let's go and look at the IRs for a second. Actually, you know, probably being somewhere in the middle is not a bad idea. a little bit of drive in there. Um, I made fat rock picking, which is really made, made for a pick. So look what I did. We have the SVT-ish SVT preamp, but I took the uh, gain down, but I turned it on hot. So without the hot, but then I click it in, but it didn't dial up the gain because that's a lot of it. A lot of gain there. But actually having it down and taking the mix quite down. Got a little bit of sizzle happening. So I'm giving myself everything under 220 for the bass section and then a nice midsection 
Let's see without the treble. Almost has a honky, um, fretless kind of vibe with distortion. So now we want the treble in there. Now do we want the bright? I'm gonna say yes, you could do it in gentle. It's weird, you can have gentle and bright, which means the high end is roll off, but you also have the high end pronounced. So I obviously have more high, more mid, and then nothing in the mid here. They're also kind of killing the bass. So as you dial up the mids, if you want more of those, you kind of have to crank up the bass a bit. So you will find yourself dialing one thing down or up, and then you have to reach for the other and find the balance again. Without the maximizers in. Not so much fun. That, that compression and compression and fattening really helps. Now let's do heavy tube, which is very similar. You can actually hear the different sections by soloing. So you know how much you want to dial in of that, or the middle. Or just the low end. So um, let's go to something less distorty and the sustain. I really cranked up the maximizers here for this. look at what the gorilla does. Feels like it's fattening a little bit more on the low end, taking the mids out a bit. just stays there forever versus let's get that back up and look at the grunt so it's really not a distortion and it's more of a harmonicizer same thing down here just more full, which again, you don't, don't know if you want that down there, 
Um, let's go into the surrender sound. Loads of trouble there. Let's look at the octave. Lower octave. I'm sorry, Aurora, that's not great. That's just not in tune. That's not there. That is pretty damn horrible. But wait, I'm still soloed. Yeah, if you wanted a little bit of extra treble, I wouldn't really see it as an octave. But now that we're not soloed anymore, let's see. Tracking is horrible on that. Imagine the octave stuff isn't there. Don't buy it because of the octave stuff. Let's look at the different preamps here. A little bit more gain. That's nice and clean and studio-like. It's a basement. Blah, 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 blah. Next one. Or the... I think you probably hear more of the, uh, the difference if we're driving in a bit. So drive. Huge difference. Yeah, it comes in when, when you drive. So this is the one the orange one that you want if you want to drive more of the mid. And then you take this down. Nice. To get that 2B kind of sound. So, and then we pick different IR. Really nice. So let's go to hot, which is just too much. And I'm on I'm on full twenty here. That's just ridiculous. Nobody nobody needs that for bass, but if you wanted that. And then this one, that's very harsh and not too black at all. That's very digital. So the good idea is do that, but really take it down. And I actually also take the gain down a bit here. Be subtle with it. To give your bass some aggression, but not too much. And that's just a very cool and flexible EQ here. Damn! More compression down here, a little bit less of this. Damn, all that fatness! 
And of course, you got the limiter here. It'll take a while to wrap your head around what the gorilla will do for you, what the gorilla will do for you. But I'm thinking that from really subtle pop rock basses with a tiny bit of grit, which I always do with parallel distortion, running it uh, through um, uh, simulated martial stuff like this, it can absolutely deliver that. Being able to compress and mix in the three different bands is great. This is something to be careful with because you have to, you know, how much am I compressing here? How much am I mixing that in? If I mix that in, I gotta pull that back a bit, but it's a balancing act. Yes. But if you want good starting points, there are these presets and these user presets probably will show up under my name. I don't know, but they said, can we have the presets? And of course it gets now delivered when you get it with my preset that I just showed you. Uh, the last one that I will show you is called make it a pretty, make it a precision base. It's all top ends gone. Nice and round, and it does what a bass is supposed to do. There you go. I don't really know because it's getting released in two, three hours or whatever, so I don't know the price. But that's what the link is for under the video, so go to that. Check it out on their website. They commissioned this video for me, so thank you, Aurora, for doing this. I mean, it's all there. The distortion, the IRs the multiband, the compression, you really don't need anything else if you got this, at least for bass. That's what I got to say. Uh, check out the links below. Thanks to Valiant Guitars from Ukraine for an amazing bass. This thing is so, so nice and, you know, does a great job for videos. Um, I'll put links below and animals at the end, as always. Mm -hmm.